Hello students, myself Dr. Obu Kavita, an assistant professor from the Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, Vinayaka Mission Sankrashriya Dental College, Salem. Today, we are going to discuss about a, a small topic on pediatric exodontia. Here are the contents of this uh, topic. First, we are going to say about the introduction to pediatric exodontia and the principles of extraction and the indication and contraindications of extraction and the pre-operative preparation before the extraction procedures and armamentarium using for the extractions and the patient and the operator position and the mechanical properties of the extraction and the types of extraction especially the intraalveolar extraction. Since the transalveolar extraction is not used in pediatric dentistry, we are going to discuss about intraalveolar extraction only. And next we are going to know about the functions of the non-working hand and the, what are the extraction techniques present and the what are the immediate post-operative care after the extraction procedure and the post-operative instructions and the post-operative complication and then the conclusion and references. Let's see each by each. So coming to introduction, you know the extraction is nothing but it is a painless removal of whole tooth or root with minimal trauma to the investing tissues so that the wound heals uneven fully and no post-operative prosthetic problem is created which is given by Geoffrey L. Ho in the year 1999 and this means we have to extract the tooth with minimal trauma to the surrounding tissues. This is the basic principle behind the extraction procedure and we have to know what is the importance of deciduous tooth or primary tooth uh, during the extraction procedure because the deciduous tooth is more important for the food consumption and it is also very aesthetic and also it helps in speech for the children speech activities for the children especially the consonants R, S and all the vowels and it is also act as a best space maintainer because no one re replace this primary tooth space maintainer because it provides a space and a natural space maintainer for the succinctus tooth to erupt to avoid small occlusions and to avoid the trauma from occlusion we have to maintain the space even after the extraction of deciduous tooth and we also know the loss of deciduous teeth causes lot of problems since it has the more complications because it uh, gonna to produce the mal occlusion and the trauma from occlusion as we say before and moreover the leaving the infected deciduous tooth it will also harm the permanent successors and uh, we have to know the significance of the primary tooth and we have also know the difference between the primary and the permanent teeth during the extraction procedure since the primary tooth structure is something something different from the permanent right so we have to see the more important uh, points first we will see the size of the primary teeth the size of the primary teeth is compared to permanent teeth it is very smaller in dimensions that is right then the shape of the primary teeth the the shape of the primary teeth is more bulbous that is meso distal width is more compared to the labial width Okay, the axial width is small and the mesiodistal width is large compared to permanent teeth. Okay, this uh, so this uh, appear as a more bulbous and the furcation region also located more cervically. And the, the more important portion is the larger the cervical construction is present. So it provides easy region to fracture when we gonna to extract it. So these are the significant factors we have to see when we are going to extract the uh, primary teeth especially the molars okay and the coming to the physiology the root of the primary teeth resorb naturally okay the ex for example the mesial root is more resorbed compared to distal root this is not seen in the permanent teeth so we have to see the pre-operative x-ray before the extraction so that after the extraction we have to uh, cross check whether the all the complete root is uh, come out or not this is very important and fourth one is the the support the bone of the alveolus is more much more elastic compared to the permanent teeth and so we have to put more pressure when compared to the 
permanent either. So these are the basic difference between the primary and permanent condition we have to evaluate before the extraction procedure. So coming to the principles of tooth extraction and primary teeth, here the types of the forceps, especially the beaks and the handles are smaller compared to the permanent forceps. The primary forceps should be the beaks and handles are smaller compared to the permanent teeth to accommodate more bulbous crown and the beaks are more curved in the forceps designed to for the removal of primary teeth because the beaks are more curved because there is a more cervical constrictions so more curves of the beaks is needed so these are the significant different in the primary tooth forceps compared to the permanent forceps and the white splaying of primary molar roots provides a more expansion of the socket. This is the second principle. And we should also avoid the blind investigation of the socket. We should not blindly by touching the socket whether the roots is present or not. Instead of that we have to take the preoperative x-ray to evaluate the how much of the root is present. So that we can finally make the decision of so the complete root has come out or not. Okay, and we have to leave small fragments inside you if the root fracture. We can leave it because the natural physiological resorption, the root can resorb easily. Is is not there more complications. So these are the fourth exam, fourth principle, and uh, to avoid injury to the soft tissues and the underlying developing permanent teeth and the other heart tissues, we should not do the these injuries. Okay, and we have to uh, make uh, take care of the underlying permanent tooth bud without disturbing these uh, the dental follicles. Okay, and we have to use the radiograph to determine the size and shape of the root and the amount and direction of root resorptions and the position and stage of the development of underlying permanent tooth and if any pathology is present. So the radiograph before the extraction is, is necessary. Okay. We know that the, there are three principles is there, one is wedge principle and second one is the wheel and axial principle and third one is the lever principle. In wedge principle, a sharp uh, wedge, this is called wedging actually, here the blade of the forceps is kept between the tooth and the periodontal ligament so that the uh, the pedial space is expanded causing the luxation of the tooth. This is the principle behind the wedge principle. And uh, what is called lever prin principle, it is nothing but it is works based on the fulcrum present. Here by giving the force on the one side and we, uh, the elevator moves upward and uh, laterally. So that it uh, here the ele elevated tip acts as a fulcrum and the handle on the one side of the arm and tooth on the other side of the arm. So based on by pushing the elevator downward, the tooth comes outward. So this is called lever principle and wheel and axial principle is nothing but by rotating the elevator, we can luxate the tooth and we extract the tooth root uh, from the socket. Uh, for example, cryos elevator and the axial uh, forceps and the cryos elevator, we can uh, use this uh, wheel and axial principle to extract the uh, primary or permanent teeth. Okay, so coming to indications, the carious tooth cannot be restored. Here, the for example, the grossly decayed and the root stems, we can't able to restore it. So we have to extract it. So in these conditions, we have to extract it. And the over retained primary teeth, and for the orthodontic purposes, we are extracting the first premolars. And in case of serial extractions, so in these are the indications of uh, primary tooth extractions. An infection of the periapical region or furcal region, and supernumerary teeth, and vertical fracture of the tooth, and the ankylosed primary teeth where the tooth is submerged, and the impacted teeth, and ectopically positioned teeth. In these conditions we have to extract the primary tooth. So coming to our con contraindications, the children having bleeding disorders and when the stomatitis and Vincent's infection is present and when there is a herpetic stomatitis and uh, in case of acute perisementitis and in case of acute dentoalveolar abscess, uh, acute cellulosis, if we extract in these conditions means the swelling gonna to trigger and aggravate in worse. 
compared to the previous condition. Okay, so we have to avoid extraction in these conditions. And in case of malignancy, and in case of acute or chronic heart disease, and in case of congenital heart disease, and in case of kidney disease. So these are the contraindications in extracting the primary tooth. So coming to pre-operative preparation of the parent and the child, first we will see the parent preparation. We have to get concerned before the procedure. Okay, before you doing any procedure, we have to get concerned from the parent. And then we have to instruct the parent not to discuss with the child what the dentist will do. For example, when we say by using the anesthetic injection, we have to go not to extract it or do when we, we have to do the pulpectomy. Na, when we parents uh, told the child the same thing, the child get more anxiety so that the child not cooperate to the treatment procedure. That's why we have to avoid the treatment what the dentist uh, doing now. We, have, we should not discuss with the child. Both, this is for both operator and the parent. Okay. And the coming to the child preparation, we should kept the armamentarium behind the dental chair. We should not focus all the armamentarium in front of the child, especially the needle. Don't hold the needle in front of the child. It may trigger the anxiety. Okay. And before giving the LA, explain the child about how it works. Because when we uh, instead of uh, giving the anesthetic injection, we usually use the the magic water that will work as a balloon so that uh, the tooth will sleep. So the, by using the second language or euphemism, we uh, we should reduce the anxiety, and uh, and we have to do the tell shudo is necessary before give, uh, before doing any procedure. We have to explain the child what we are going to do. Okay, because then only the child realizes, oh, this is going to, this is uh, the dentist is doing, this is this uh, ma'am is doing, like that they will recognize it and they will calm down. Okay, and then, then the child realizes the difference between the pressure and pain. Once the LA is given, no, the child have to know what is difference between pressure and pain. Sometimes the, the pressure is triggered as your pain, the child gets panic, this has so much pressure, it will go not to cause my pain and my tooth got injured so that the child will panic, no? so we have to explain it what is difference between pressure and pain. So coming to armamentarium needed, first we will see about the forceps, okay? there are three components in forceps, one is handles and second one is hinge and third one is beaks. And there are two types of uh, forceps present. One is English pattern and American pattern. What is the difference between the two? First one is the English pattern where the hinge is perpendicular to the long axis of the handle. Whereas in American pattern, the hinge is directed horizontally to the uh, long axis of the handle. This is the main difference between the two. And uh, we have to held the maxillary forceps in the palm up position. This is the right uh, position for the maxillary forceps. And in mandibular forceps, uh, the palm down position is the correct. Here, this is the correct position on holding the forceps. Here, the center of rotation of the tooth get displaced epically when the force is inserted beyond the cemento enamel junction. We will see later. See, the, this is the correct position of the maxillary and mandibular forceps. And uh, there are five different motions when we use the forceps on the tooth. One is apical pressure and second one is buccal or labial pressure. And third one is palatal or lingual pressure. And fourth one is rotational pressure. And fifth one is the tractional forces. Let us see each by each. Okay. In uh, apical pressure, we insert the blade uh, between the tooth and the periodontium. Here the pressure directed epically and this is cannot cause any fracture to the apical bone region. It, but it, uh, it luxates the tooth to the tooth in the epical direction. That is the only uh, action by using the epical forceps. forceps. The, but this is the step one by placing the forceps between the tooth it causes the apical pressure first second thing we have to do the buccal or labial pressure here when we apply pressure on the buccal or labial side 
the two root of the tooth causes pressure in the lingual cortical plate so when we apply force buccally or labially the pressure on the lingual cortical plate causes and there is a more risk for the buccal cortical plate to fracture so same on the expansion during the palatal or lingual pressure when we apply palatal or lingual pressure the risk of the lingual cortical plate fracture is high okay and the pressure is present in the labio apical position okay here the expansion occurs on the labial surface okay in buccal or labial pressure the expansion occur on the lingual surface and palatal or lingual pressure the expansion occurs on the labial surface okay coming to fourth step in the rotational pressure usually the rotation pressure we will do only for the anterior tooth okay because in uh, during the posterior teeth the multi since the multiple root is present it, uh, it gonna to fracture in the furcation area that's why we are using the rotational pressure only on the anterior teeth okay during the rotation pressure all the periodontal ligament fibers got tied and then it is uh, very easy to come up the uh, tooth to the outward position okay and that step 5 is the traction forces by applying pressure uh, outwardly and upwardly the we can able to extract the tooth on the from the socket okay and this is the fourth one is the traction forces coming to chair and patient position for extraction first we will see the the operator uh, position in the maxilla and mandibular teeth okay first during the uh, operator standing there is a separate position is there and during the operator sitting there is separate position is there tooth extraction okay in case of uh, when the operator is standing for the maxillary extraction tooth the chair should be tipped backward and the maxillary occlusal plane at 45 degree to the floor and the patient mouth should be at the level between the operator shoulder and elbow but in case of operator standing in the mandibular extraction teeth the patient should be in the upright position and the mandibular occlusion plane is should be parallel to the floor and the the patient mouth should be at the level slightly below the operator's elbow okay and uh, in case of operator sitting for the maxillary extraction tooth the patient should be in the supine position that is 10 degree to the ground and the patient mouth should be at the level of operator's elbow and in case of uh, mandibular extraction the patient should be at supine position that is 20 degree to 30 degree to the ground and the patient mouth should be at the level slightly above the operator's elbow so this is the chair position and this is the operator position in case of extraction okay for all maxillary teeth and the mandibular anterior teeth if the patient is, if the operator is right handed na Uh, the operator should stand at the seven o'clock to eight o'clock position. In case of uh, left-handed operator, four o'clock to five o'clock position is the correct. And uh, in case of mandibular left posterior teeth, if the operator is uh, right-handed operator means the seven o'clock to eight o'clock position is the right position. And in case of left-handed operator, the one o'clock position is the correct position. And in mandibular right posterior teeth extraction. if the operator is right handed operator uh, they should stand at the 11 o'clock position and uh, in case of left uh, handed operator means 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock position is the right position so coming to mechanical properties of extraction let's see uh, the mechanical properties only first we will see about the expansion of the alveolar socket once we place the beak that is the blade of the beak of the forceps it will ex expansion occurs between the tooth surface and the bone surface okay exodontia by expansion of the bony socket is similar to the removal of post embedded in the ground if this is the post embedded in the ground no when we play cricket this is same uh, they are comparing this to the extraction of the forceps okay the post is moved laterally into and from motion motion here the removal of post by moving the from to and motion okay in similarly we have to make the tooth also move either labially or lingually the uh, traction forces is given and then we extract it okay this results in displacement of soil surrounding the post and permitting the post to be removed out here the displacement occurs by moving the post in and around the soil so that the displacement of soil occurs here what will happens means the pdl fibers gets displaced or teared so that we can 
remove the tooth from the socket. This is the basic principle behind the extraction. And second one is by using the lever and fulcrum. As we see before, by using the fulcrum, one side is a tooth and another side is the hinge of the forceps. So by using this lever principle, we are going to extract the tooth. And third one is the by using the wedge of wedges. By insertion of wedge shaped forceps blades resulting in rise of the tooth in the socket. We already say that when placing the beaks of the tooth, uh, that is blade of the beak of the tooth in between the tooth and the periosteum, the bone expansion is there. No? That is the expansion of bone laterally and the uh, luxation of the tooth also present. So that it also causes the tooth to come out of the socket okay this is the mechanical properties of the extraction so coming to types of extraction only the intraalveolar extraction is uh, followed in pediatric dentistry so let's see the process first we will place gingival retraction cord which is used to because by placing the cord we can able to easily place the beak into the tooth and the periosteum okay then we have to go for luxation of tooth using the elevators first the straight elevators is inserted perpendicular into the interdental space and the inferior portion of the blade rests on the bone and its superior portion pushes the tooth and it causes the expansion of the alveolar sockets and tears the pedial ligament okay and then application of forces to the tooth as we saw before there are the five forces okay we have to first grasp the, the tooth from the apical to the cervical line and the first lingual beak and then the buccal beak okay first we have to place on the lingual side and then on the buccal side okay and the parallel to the long axis of the tooth should be held the forceps and the dilation and expansion of the alveolar bone presence and the forceps should grasp at the end of the handle so that we can easily displace the tooth and coming to luxation of the tooth using the forceps first we have to give moments for the luxation and the apical force is applied again to shift to the center of rotation apically and the buccal and lingual moment should be given and should not we should not jerk the uh, forceps to avoid the fracture of the cortical plate okay and uh, in case of removal of a tooth from the socket we have to give slight traction force buccally and once the tooth is out the tooth and the socket should not examine deeply so coming to functions of non-working hand first we will see the functions of opposite hand that is if the right handed operator means the functions of opposing hand means the left hand in the case of uh, left hand operator means the opposing hand is the right hand okay what is the function of the opposite hand? First, we have to reflect the soft tissue of the cheeks, lips and the tongue to avoid injury to the soft tissues. And the protection of other teeth from the forceps should be due because to avoid injury to the surrounding soft tissues. And the stabilization of patient's head that is uh, along with the opposite arm should be done with the help of opposite hand and the supporting the jaw during the mandibular extraction to avoid the TMJ uh, problems and the supporting the alveolar process providing tactile information regarding the expansion. Okay, this is the functions of the opposite hand. In case of grasp of the opposite hand, there are two types of grasp present. One is pinch grasp and another one is a sling, sling grasp. Okay, pinch grasp is nothing but while extracting the maxillary teeth, the operator should grasp the alveolar bone around the tooth to be extracted by the pinch grasp. Okay, here we will see that the pinch grasp where the operator opposite hand is grasping the alveolar bone of the tooth. Okay, and coming to sling grasp, while extracting the mandibular teeth, the operator grasps the alveolar bone around the tooth to be extracted by a sling grasp. Here in the mandible, the operator opposite hand is supporting the alveolar bone in, by the, using the sling grasp. Coming to extraction techniques, first we will see the each tooth we will define it. Okay, When these teeth that is upper primary and permanent anteriors, when these teeth are in normal position, the forceps used for the primary teeth and the upper uh, primary anterior or upper primary root forceps should be used. Here handle, hinge and the beak are in same long axis of the tooth okay 
and come for the permanent teeth the upper straight forceps should be used by applying the forceps beaks to the root and then by using the clockwise and anti clockwise rotating about the long axis of the tooth these are the forceps should be used and the the technique should be followed for in case of permanent teeth okay in case of labially placed upper lateral incisor and canine we have to give very little buccal support and we should not easily remove either by using the straight forceps applied mesially and distally and by using a straight rotary movement or by use of straight elevator okay so in case of up, labially placed upper lateral incisor and canine but in case of parallelly positioned lateral incisors and canine we have to use elevator because since the forceps is not accessible for this position that is parallel position okay most commonly used elevator are curved warwick james and copland's elevator is used okay this is the use of copland elevator to deliver a buccally placed upper canine in case of upper primary molars these teeth display the most widely splayed roots because there are the more cervical construction in primary molars and tooth also to crown structure also more bulbous so here the expansion of socket is required and the forceps used here is upper primary molar forceps and the force applied is initially we have to give palatal extraction to expand and then the buccal uh, direction force that is a buccal traction and uh, in case of upper premolars the forceps used is upper premolar forceps and in case of first premolar we should remove by use of a buccal expansion and in case of second premolar we have to give rotary movement during the extraction with the forceps and uh, in case of upper permanent molars the forceps should be used as right and left upper permanent molar forceps and the tooth should be removed by expanding the socket in the buccal direction that is the buccal traction should be given as in case of primary molars and in case of lower primary anteriors the forceps used here is lower primary anterior or root forceps should be used and in case of uh, uh, it should be uh, also used for the extraction of upper anteriors okay since here, here the anterior forceps are always the handle hinge and the uh, beak should be on the 90 degree angle so for uh, the lower primary anterior or root forceps should be used this is, a, is also we can use for the extraction of say, upper anterior also in case of lower permanent anterior root of lower incisors or then mesio distally and rotation is likely to cause root fracture so that the most effective method of removal is the to apply the lower root forceps and uh, expand the socket labially this is the most common method and the permanent lower canine may be uh, delivered by using the rotary movement or by the buccal expansion and in case of lower premolars the forceps uh, used here is lower premolar forceps but this is also removed by rotary movement around and the long axis of the root and in case of lower primary molars the forceps used here is lower primary molar forceps and uh, with the two pointed beaks which engage the bifurcation okay to avoid the force at the bifurcation area and the buccolingual expansion of the socket is also necessary and in case of lower permanent molars the two designs of forceps is used one is lower per molar forceps and another one is the forceps of cowhorn design based on the direction we have to use respectively and when the buccal expansion is not sufficient to deliver the tooth and then the forceps should be moved moved in the figure of eight fashion to expand the socket lingually as well as buccally this is the principle behind when we going for the buccal expansion of the tooth in case of extraction of molars so coming to immediate post operative care first we have to inspect the tooth and root to ensure the complete removal of tooth has happened or not okay this is the first care and second one is visualize the socket by thoroughly drying the socket and the adjacent field so that we can easily see the what is uh, remain what are the remnants present after the tooth extraction and do, should not inspect the socket for excessive bleeding which could be due to injured vessels that is uh, because of forceful bleeding or or friable granulation tissue that is steadily flowing blood we should not inspect in these conditions okay and uh, compress the expanded socket with the manual pressure or digital pressure 
for this is also known as simple alveolar plast plastic okay and the application of pressure pack to arrest the bleeding using the moistened sterile gauze rolled over the cotton wool this is uh, essential uh, to avoid the blood to loss more okay and uh, to lose the approximating sutures are placed following the extraction to stop the bleeding and prevent food impaction if required and the analgesic should be prescribed to the patients after the extraction based on the weight we have to calculate the dose and we have to prescribe it so coming to post operative complication uh, these are the post operative uh, complications after extraction one is the hemorrhage and another one is the pain and another one is the swelling of the jaw and then the dry socket and then the trismus and most common complications also present in child is uh, the cheek bite especially when we give LA the patient didn't know the perception on that side or pain on that side so that the child usually habit of the cheek biting so, so that after the extraction the after the once the, the anesthetic property has gone the swelling will occur these are the most common complications after the extraction in children so we have to instruct the patient about this complications and we have and the patient should know uh, what is going to happen when we bite the cheek or the lip okay and peculiar for child patient these are the complications one is natal and neonatal teeth and in case of infra occlusion of the teeth this is also known as the ankylosis or submerged tooth and in case of fusion or germination of two teeth and in case of damage to the permanent successor we should not extract it and then dislocation of the mandible okay these are the peculiar for child patient when we do extractions so coming to post operative instruction uh, for the child the child should not dismissed until the blood Lot is formed and we have to hold a small cotton roll between his teeth for the for an half an hour and not to rinse the mouth for next 24 hours and avoid hot food or beverages for next 24 hours hot or spicy food and not to suck, suck from the straw on the day of extraction to avoid the clot displacement and not to bite his lip and do not disturb the area where the tooth was removed okay in case of parent should reinforce the child for the instruction that already given to the child and light meal should be uh, taken and uh, not the hard food like the sticky foods and the the bones and non wedges uh, should, should avoid the hard foods and the warm saline rinses and gentle brushing should be advised from the next day and the analgesics is prescribed if the extraction was traumatic and antibiotic coverage is done if the area was infected. These are the post-operative instructions to the parents. So coming to recent advances, there are other type of extraction. First one is the Jewel Dent Flex Periotom, Flexi Periotomes. Here the periotomes used because it reduces the risk of the fracture of the cortical plate. Here, the electrical unit contains a controller box and the periotome is mounted on the hands piece. Based on the electrical unit, the periotome gonna to use it. Here, the periotome is mounted on the hand piece and it functions like as a wedging into the pedial space and severe in the sharp piece fibers. That is, it is cutting out of the sharp piece fibers only so that the tooth can be uh, loosened and tooth can extract with the minimal lateral movement. So, the less force is applied after the uh, periotome and the flapless removal of tooth is should be done with the help of periotomes and the reduced risk of fracture of the cortical plate. Since the pressure is less, so there is the risk of fracture of the cortical plate is also less. And there is also decreased post-operative pain and discomfort. These are the main advantages of the periotomes. And second one is, this is called physics forceps. Here, the forceps with the bumper is placed on the one beaker. This was designed by Golden Mesh based on class 1 lever mechanics. Here, the presence of bumper act as a fulcrum and is placed on the mucogingival junction on the facial aspect. By applying the pressure here, uh, this pressure is applied steadily. There is a more removal of hyaluronidase enzyme on the pedial surface which causes easy uh, extraction of the tooth because in conventional forceps, we have to apply more uh, pressure uh, to the tooth surface. By the use of hyaluronidase enzyme, it destroyed the pedial fibers, traumatized the pedial fibers due to the pressure by the bumper. 
so that it is very easy to extract uh, by applying the minimal forceps the, so this also causes more efficient extraction with minimal trauma so in both periotomes and the physic forceps there is a reduced risk of fracture of the cortical plate and there is a decreased post operative pain and the discomfort okay and fourth one is the by using the laser especially the erbium yang laser used for the surgical extraction here the laser offers a non contact and low vibration bone cutting and there is a no visible negative or thermal sidal effects present and once the tooth is uncovered the conventional removal of tooth can be done okay and the time consuming and the constant suction is required because we have to remove the tooth by each step it causes time consuming okay but the post operative complications and the post operative pain is also very less okay and in case of piezo surgery also here this is also effective in bone cutting we also know that by this is also used for the tooth also and no injuries to the soft tissues occur and here also the time requirement is more see here the liquid is present the piezo tip is here and this is the hand piece in with the help of the dental hand piece the piezo tip is we are inserting that piezo tip in the dental hand piece and this is the peristaltic pump with the help of this pump we can give the each stroke within the period of time for example we have to give for the primary tooth uh, we have to give four strokes for the 10 seconds like that uh, it is there uh, by each we have to remove it uh, so that it is will take more time this is uh, both are time consuming both laser and the piezo surgery these are the main two advantages but the post operative complications is very less in case of laser also and in case of piezo surgery also so these are the recent advances in periotomes and our second one is the physical forceps and third one is the use of laser and fourth one is the piezo surgery so these are the recent advances so and coming to conclusion for the young child who requires the removal of primary teeth the dentist should recognize the proper sequence of all the procedure okay and the dentist should prepare the child by using the sensitive approach through his section of words that indicate to the child the nature of the procedure we should always explain the patient what we are going to do but we should not use the terminology as the uh, as we use in medical or dental uh, procedures we should always use the second language or euphemism to avoid the dental anxiety to the child so that the child will not panic and we also distract the child by using the what the child will like the child like to watch cartoon during the procedure we we can show that and we can uh, tell a story what the child likes so we have to always interact the child what is he or she needed and then then we can make the child to trust the operator by use of a desensitizing procedures also then and after the procedure also if the patient is more cooperative we can give the rewards also so that the child gets very enthusiastic because of yeah, i got the reward like that so we have to make the child as a best friend uh, in uh, during during the throughout the treatment procedures okay my, my reference is thank you for watching my lesson on the topic of pediatric exodontia and thank you for the patient of watching thank you